Thanks. Okay, we are recording. Okay, today is the November 15th DEI subcommittee meeting. Uh, we'll start with a roll call. We'll go around the room and say who's here. Shivali, can we start with you, please? Sure. Shivali Finkelstein. Rob Mezzanotti. Aaron Earl. Katie Gabriel Black. Jennifer Lima. Dave Alden. Okay. Um, did everybody have the opportunity to review the minutes from October 18th? Yes. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. Second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Awesome. Um, so the first item that I had on the agenda was to update the committee on the recommendations that were forwarded to the school committee. Um, we discussed them at the October 30th school committee meeting. I'm kind of losing track of my time, but um, as a reminder, we had forwarded three recent recommendations to them. One was to increase opportunities for student voice in areas valued by students. The second one was to create an NKSD equity vision statement. And the third one was to address the monitoring of discipline data, solicit student input about the current disciplinary system, and to review and revise discipline policies and practices from an equity lens. Um, and there had also been one outstanding from February um, requesting that the NKSD develop a plan for including anonymous reporting for race and gender-based harassment and incidents of bias. Um, so we discussed all four of those things at the school committee meeting on October 30th. And two of them um, are kind of, were tasked to the administration. So I asked Rob if he would give a follow-up on those um, sure. tonight. Sure, yep, so um, student voice and equity vision um, are both being, being um, being addressed, um, so they're both they're both first of all listed um, specifically within initiatives in our in our strategic plan, um, which is being which is which has been updated um, when we got feedback from from Ride on that. So so that's going to be something that we're going to be presenting to the school committee um, as well. But besides just that, because that's really just the, the paperwork, um, it's going to be a topic on our admin council meeting, which is coming up on Monday, um, to to be uh, discussed among the administrative team. And our goal is to design something around um, both of these issues to be uh, part of the professional development days we're going to be having, um, one in January, one in March, one in April. Um, so, so we're looking to, um, I want to brainstorm this with the team. My thought is that um, we're going to look at getting representation from different constituent groups, different, different um, levels, different, different roles within the school um, to work on the equity vision statement, to look at samples that are um, around in other districts um, and to basically try to um, try to try to make one for ours um, basically so that's we, we look at that work as being kind of like um, part of the work that we're, we're doing in in January specifically in January and March um, is when we want to make that make that focus happen okay awesome um. What about student voice in general? Student voice is, is going to be something that's a, going to be a little bit, again, building, not building specific, but level specific, um, just in ways that, um, in ways that ha that happens. So we're going to look at, first of all, take an inventory of what we do now, um, what schools are doing at the elementary level, at the, at the, at the middle level, at the high school level, um, how students have, have the ability to communicate, how they have the ability to voice um, their um, opinions on different things, how they have a consistent you know, communication with administration, teachers, and so forth. And then we're gonna see where we are. And then from there, we're gonna look at how we can tap into maybe some gaps that we have. So maybe that's through a survey. Maybe that's through um, particular issues. You know what I mean? That students should have more voicing. Um, that, that would be appropriate for that. Um, I think it's gonna be a little bit, uh, again, level specific. And um, we're gonna, again, start with, this, with the leadership team on that. And then, um, and then from there, move, move forward. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions on that? Sorry. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on what Rob talked about? Um, the other part of student voice that was not um, administration specific, but that the school committee is um, 
taking um, ownership of is to increase student opportunities in subcommittees, like we have Chloe here, but um, at looking to see can we extend membership to the other subcommittees, and if we if it's not membership, making sure that their voice is incorporated in the work that those subcommittees are doing, um, and not just expecting them to be able to come to meetings, but going to where the students are and finding other ways to engage them in the work that the subcommittees themselves are doing. Um, did I miss anything on that, Aaron? No, I think that that was the big thing, um, is just kind of, you know, I think it's, I think we had talked about that it was a multi kind of level opportunity um, for the district, you know, to be at the building level, the administration level, and then also at the school committee level, and that there's lots of different ways, because um, the equity report, if I remember correctly, specifically talked about not just student voice, but like student voice in decision making mm -hmm. parts, like like it, not just hearing them, but having them be involved in, in making decisions that impact their learning and impact the district. And so, um, you know, that happens a lot at the school committee level with things like the budget um, policies, et cetera. And so trying to think through those opportunities, um, but definitely the part that you said about identifying some structural ways of, of, and we're looking at a policy right now that talks about the subcommittee membership and thinking about some ways that we structurally can work that in um, is kind of that next step, I think, for us. Um, and then the uh, discipline data, we've um, made the, we authorized uh, as a school committee the creation of a temporary subcommittee to solely focus on discipline. We felt that it was an important enough and meaty enough subject that it should have like a specific task force um, dedicated to it. So we authorized its creation at the last meeting. The meeting that we're having uh, tomorrow night will be further discussing like the scope and the charge and uh, the process of who will be on it and how um, how that'll come together. So I'm excited about that. I think um, and everybody seemed to be in agreement that that was something that was definitely you know needed to have the attention focused um, on it. Yeah. And just, just to add, um, I think we had set the timeline for that, um, and it could always be renewed depending on the work and whatnot, but I feel like it was a year. A, oh, yeah, yeah. A, a year yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, anybody have any questions on that? Um, and then the last one um, was developing a plan for anonymous reporting uh, for race-based and gender-based uh, harassment and incidents of bias. There was some discussion that uh, there may be something similar or that we could incorporate in the works through the work that we've been doing on Title IX. Um, so our attorney was going to be checking with the consultants that we have retained to help us with that to see um, if there is um, something already in process. We talked about how um, if we do move forward with that because the school committee didn't actually like vote to do this how you know if it's anonymous um, you know it may make it harder to investigate and it may make it harder to you know follow up um, so that's something that we need to discuss I did do some research after that meeting and I did like a quick like Google search because we talked about the fact that it, it can't be a brand new thing like this must be in existence and, and I found multiple um, schools that have policies that's what we were talking about yeah <laughs> the policies um, that um, you know have robust systems and they have robust procedures and it, it's definitely not an uncommon thing so we'll bring those examples forward when this gets discussed again at the school committee level because uh, of course there is a concern you know also with it being anonymous to make sure that people aren't abusing that and you know penalize going after somebody when it doesn't so you have to balance the, the balance the two and then the last was the um, the subcommittee recommendations, I think I'm like losing track of my days, but so it went from here to the school committee and then from the school committee to the policy subcommittee. And the policy subcommittee has moved forward a subcommittee in general policy back to the school committee, which we're gonna be hearing tomorrow night. Um, so it's kind of like the long and winding road, but every time it's come up, I've stressed that it's specifically important for this committee because there are people on this committee who would like to roll off of it, but are holding on until we get the process set up um, for new members. So we're going to hear that policy tomorrow. Um, and then December. And then, yeah, all policies have to be heard twice. So it'll be tomorrow and then December 5th would be the next meeting. And there may be um, amendments made to what the policy subcommittee put forward by the school committee. 
Any questions on that? Because that was complicated. <laughs> Have you seen a draft? Yeah, there's a draft actually attached to the, um, I'll send it to everybody, but it's, it's part of the school committee packet. Um, but I can send that out for sure. It is definitely a draft though. Yeah, yeah. And I welcome any input on that um, because we're going to be discussing it on. Yeah, people can send it to, to the school committee if they email, have any thoughts yeah. or, of course, um, yeah. like citizens' comments. So yeah. That's probably like the most efficient way yeah. at this point. Um, okay. And then um, way back when, Shavali, I don't even remember when we talked about this, was reviewing the core values. Um, that the high school had put together. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so um, I know that we had talked about, we had revised some of our core values through the SIT team at the high school. And the thought was, if this committee would like to just kind of throw their eyes on it um, for, uh, for any recommendations that I can bring back to the SIT team. However, we are working on the vision of a graduate that has moved since then. So I wasn't sure, I, I know a lot of this is about to, get revised. So I didn't know if this committee, when Jen and I talked about it, it was back in the Months. spring. <laughs> yes. So at that point, we had not moved at the vision of a graduate mm -hmm. work. So we, we are there now. And so at that time, the thought was for this committee to put their eyes on, on this to bring any, and I'm happy to bring any recommendation to the SIT team to make any changes. But if you feel like that's not worth our time, since we're working on something that's going to be revised, then we don't have to do that. So do you think it's better to put the focus on the vision of the graduate statement once it comes out? Or or one of the members is on that committee. Okay. I know I know Rob and I are on that mm -hmm. committee, but okay. um, I didn't know if anybody else from this committee is. Is that less public yet? The, 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 uh, yeah, the vision of the graduate? graduate. Um, it's not public yet, yeah. um, but people who are on it have been notified. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure it was be public I didn't thinking about yeah it, but yeah like, no, no, no no yeah, it's public yeah. but like i didn't yeah, know the list yeah. was finalized yet yeah. like the list is the list yeah. is finalized yeah. um so we can always being part of that committee we can bring that in here uh for feedback so that we can bring it back mm -hmm. yeah feedback. that would be we great yeah. that yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, that would be good yeah i don't so want people to spend their time yeah. just so i'm understanding time. correctly yeah. um so right now on the north kingston high school website there's core values and belief statement and you think that that won't exist anymore because of the vision of the graduate or it will get edited because of the vision of the it graduate? It may get edited yeah. or, or replaced yeah. with, the, with the vision uh -huh. only because we would want to see consistency throughout. So yeah. when Jen and I talked about this, this was back in the springtime. Yeah. It's gotten carried again. Yeah, it's been, yeah. It's yeah. Been I, I don't want yeah. people to spend yeah, their time um, if, if that's where we want to No, I think that makes so. more sense rather than revising something that's going to be revised. Mm -hmm. So we can bring, Rob and I can bring update of the vision of graduate to this committee. We can, you know, as, as time progresses. Yeah, and we're going to, yeah, because that's part of the part of the plan with VOG, because we had a lot of interest in being on the committee. Um, we had a lot of people, which was that's awesome. We had, a, we, had a, we had a very wide, like, unfortunately, we had to tell some people they couldn't just because we couldn't have a committee that big. But what we did say is we're going to hold, um, we're going to call them listening sessions, mm -hmm. or not really listening sessions, more like a, like community sessions, yeah. you know what I mean. So, so we'll do it at, in the evening because some people email me saying we couldn't, they couldn't make a commitment during the day. So we'll do them in the evening, so that way it's like we can have conversations with people who couldn't be on the committee, mm -hmm. um, but who can like kind of keep them updated on progress of the work and get feedback from them and and do that kind of thing. So this group can be part of that as well. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Are there students on the group? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, anybody have any questions about that? Rob, you want to talk about um, the um, logic models? Yes. Um, thank you. I had the opportunity to meet with um, URI professor Kayon Murray Johnson. Mm -hmm. Okay. She she um, she is we we uh, we're put in contact with her about a speaker for um, basically DEI centered uh, focus for our April PD day, and so uh, Kenny and I met with her. We had a really great conversation for a while talking about um, our, our work basically talking about like our focus and, and our goals and things like that 
And so she is, she's scheduled to come in and talk to our um, faculty and staff on, on the April PD day. But one of the things that she talked about was, was she really poured into the, the audit that was done. And she, she you know, mentioned you know, the, the work that's kind of the daunting work that's really ahead of us with, that, with the audit. And one of the things that she talked about was the idea of a logic model. I gotta be honest, I wasn't really even familiar with what a logic model was or how it worked in practicality, but, but she kind of walked us through it. And um, basically the way she broke it down made, made a lot of sense to me. So basically, because she said that the work of DEI is so difficult in so many ways, in so many communities, that she talked about how a logic model can be a really good guiding point in terms of setting short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals for what we want to do. So it's more like, rather than this, it's this approach that, that she put it out of there as a practical approach that kind of like gives a team an orient to say, hey, let's, what are the small wins that we can, we can check off right now? What are the sort of like sh medium-term wins that we can check off in like, you know, maybe a year to two to three? What are the long-terms that we want to be like at over a longer period of time? And um, I don't know, it just made a lot of sense to me in terms of how she framed it, because it, it, she, she, she framed it as a way that this is like, has been effective in terms of building consensus around some of these, um, some of these initiatives that, that we all strive for, but can hit so many difficult road bumps along the way, if that makes sense. Um, so she put it out there and she, she, the way she phrased it was, um, she said, um, she gave us a template um, that, that we can that I can share and it, it, it basically it's 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 looking at all the elements of your your strategies in the district and the school um, and then what are the goals that you have within your group um, how will you achieve them what's long term what can be done now um, and 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 she she took this as a, as a suggestion to focus our equity goals it was just kind of a, a recommendation I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on this or input I know some of you have been part of a group longer than me, so, so maybe this is something that's been done, uh, or at least something close to it, I don't know, but I thought it made a lot of sense to me, and it was, I learned something because I, I saw that logic model recommendation, and it was something that I wasn't personally like familiar with, so. Yeah, I I, I've taught it, um, and I've used it in a couple different okay. ways, and it's really cool, and it makes sense that your brain would really like yeah. it. It's, um, <laughs> it's really focused on like inputs, like of information, and then outputs, and then like Rob said, like, like short term, medium term, and long term goals, but like for each piece of it, and it really goes back to that concept of like low hanging fruit and like trying to get some wins and some like movement and opportunity and things, while also knowing that like some things take a really long time. But I do agree, it's a great template and a great framework um, for really grounding the work and then also like showing people like that progress is happening. Um, you know, I've seen it done in a couple different ways where it's like very color coded and like very like like very like visual like for how it moves through the different buckets and what's getting done in the short-term category what's getting done in the medium what's getting done in the long and when things are getting accomplished like how that's reflected and so um it yeah i, I mean i would be very supportive of using that strategic approach because it like i think helps when you're looking at a lot of stuff in like then there's also a lot of stuff right so like right. It's, it's definitely a good way to organize it i think yeah and and um Dr. Murray Johnson, um, who, who's very happy at URI, Kenny and I were both thinking like, man, she'd be great for this Everybody DEI coordinator position that we have. <laughs> we have, but um, we, we did talk to her about that a little bit, but she's, she's, she's very happy where she is. But she's a, she's a member of the community, um, and she's got a really, I think, a- Our, your, Like NK community? Yep, oh. yep, she's, she's, a, she's a parent. Um, you know, she's got a child in, in our, in, at, at Stony Lane. Um, and she had, I, I thought she had a fantastic, um, you know, approach on this and, and a real, a real deep level of expertise. Um, so I'm looking forward to when she comes to speak to our staff, nice. you know, I think she'll be really good. And I'm hoping that we can kind of continue to work with her in some capacity where she can, she can kind of like kind of guide us on some of this work. Cause she really does have a, uh, it was clear from talking to her that she has a real deep passion for it. And she did some work at the high school pre-COVID and then mm -hmm. it kind of COVID hit and we got away from it. But she did work with the English department and the next goal was to work with the social studies department with the, with the content they present and, and some of the things to be mindful of. And 
then we just got away with it. So we're excited to have her back. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's awesome. Um, so I, I remember, I'm trying to look for it right now, um, that they had actually given us some like logic model tools, like equity tools. Do you remember that? Um, they gave, PCG gave them to us. Yeah, I would like to very much say that I remember, but no, yeah, no I know. that one I left know. the... They definitely did because... I remember that because we asked for resources. Yes. That vaguely sounds familiar. Yeah, because that was one of the things that they had recommended and we were like, that's great, but do you have an example of like what that looks like that we could implement? And of course I can't Was it... it. Um, You're gonna find me fight with Google for a second. Hold on. Was it Sydney that sent it? Equity impact analysis tools examples. Here it is. Yeah. So and they had provided us um, like a handful of like toolkits for decision making, equity impact. Um, you know, impact analysis tool. Is is that like the same type of thing that she's referring to? Yeah. 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 Similar to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, and I, um, I think at one point we did talk about this briefly, because this is back from January. I'm trying to remember if we, like where we landed with that. But um, there are definitely some great examples um, that PCG had provided us. Um, that we could use. Is our goal today, like for this agenda item, like what's what's success look like for us today? Like, are we trying to decide, like? I didn't have, Rob yeah. wanted to discuss it. Yeah, I wanted I to just put it out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it it's just informative. Of, I was just trying to, I was, yeah. I was yeah. hearing what, like, mm -hmm. I was like, what, what are we, what's our, what's our agenda? Like, what's not, and that's the wrong word, but like, yeah, like I was just curious, like, are we trying to make a decision? Or are we just learning about something that we might want to consider? So that's helpful, thanks. And I, I'll, I'll share the ones that were shared. With seems us, like with a everybody. sensible approach. Mm. Yeah, you know, like, I think of it. I think of it around like some of our like big picture goals, right? Like some of our things that like are are our um, you know real real like cultural systemic type of goals that we have, um, which can seem the way she kind of framed it was that it's a way to sort of break them down where it's where it's kind of like done. Uh, according to like a formula, according to like a like, but but in chunks, you know what I mean. Um, so okay. I don't know if there's something that we want to, because I know we have like, we have the, the the voice piece, the equity statement, and the, and the discipline data, which is all like really important work. Um, but I also think there's there's that there's really that 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 cultural piece, you know what I mean, that we want to look at, mm -hmm. and 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 I just I wonder if we if we frame it in a way where we say, okay, here's kind of like our Here's our north star, if you will, and then here's kind of how we're going to get there over like like app, like our benchmarks along the way. The, that was that was the way she framed it. I thought it sounded good. The cool part is we've you've sublimely been doing it mm -hmm. um, because like the, and the cool part too is that like you've done or we've done like one of the hardest parts, which is like gathering the facts, um, at least in the, the the research sense of like the part. And so like really that first the first step in the logic model is establishing like working group structures, gathering facts, like all of those sort of things. So like the establishment of this group and then the like equity audit is like that kind of first mm -hmm. step. And then the second one is where you really like assess like strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats and like review inputs. And so like you kind of did that when you went through the list and like just, you know, when you were talking about resources and time mm -hmm. and all of that sort of stuff, like those are just examples of opportunities, weaknesses, threats, like things that are hard, like that sort of stuff. And then the next piece is really like identifying resources and building strategies, which is kind of like where I feel like we're at now. Like, mm -hmm. okay, the administration is going to start putting together a timeline. Okay, we created a task force to look at this, whatever. And then the last step is like drafting a new plan, basically, like saying, okay, we have all this information. We looked at what resources we have. Okay, now this is like the actual plan because like the report is not a plan. Right. Like the report is information, but like it's. I think that's like kind of where you all have been heading, which is really cool that um, that Kenny was able to like, like that it fits really mm -hmm. well to like what you've already been doing, which is awesome because it's not like you have to start from scratch, right. but you can build on what you've already been doing kind of organically and put it in this framework to get to that plan part. And then like that last step is really finalize and communicate. Like 
really explaining to people this is the plan and, and trying to get it to trickle down, like so that it's not just like this amorphous thing that lives at the top of the district, but that like every person from like every school understands like this is the plan and this is where I fit into the plan and that sort of stuff, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, Kayon shared with me a video. Um, it's it's not it's not like it's really a video of, uh, demonstrating our logic model. It's like four minutes long. Do you want to do you want to yeah, watch it? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, all right. Let me uh, let me get this. It's like hell. Yeah. We do not get that reference. 2001. Yeah, Space Odyssey? Movie. Yeah. I've never seen the movie and I get the reference there, and that's like a cultural. Uh, <laughs> I don't get it either. Open Thank you, young person, person like, like me. So they're in a spaceship, and mm -hmm. the computer running the spaceship takes over. And the, its name is Hal. Yeah. 1968 classic. And it's just a yeah, it's just a red like top. <laughs> and the the guy in it is Dave, much like me, one of the astronauts. And he says, "Open the pod bay doors out." And Hal says, "I can't do that." In this really creepy voice. And Hal is H A L, which is each one letter before I B. Oh no, one letter yeah, one letter before I B M or after. Oh. H I A B. Oh, I didn't know you're in. Stanley Cooper. You're in. Stanley Cooper. You're in. You're in. Data is everywhere. Data is everywhere. You are real. You use it in your everyday life. Hold on, super loud. That's super loud. If you go to the little. I have remotes over here if you don't want to get up. Yeah, I can try. <laughs> From my comfy chair. <laughs> essential part of our work. It shows us what needs to improve and whether or not specific actions are helping make these improvements. Don't know where to start? Why not start with the logic model? The logic model helps you determine what data you need, how you're going to collect it, and what the data is going to tell you. It's like a roadmap, an overview snapshot of what you're doing, and a great first step toward creating a new positive relationship with data. Let's work through an example. First, ask yourself, what are your short and long-term goals? Then, fill in the rest of the diagram with the information you already know. Inputs, outputs, assumptions, and external factors. Inputs are what you invest, like staffing, funding, equipment, and technology. Outputs are the activities you're doing, and whom you're doing them for. Assumptions are what you already know. And external factors are things that are out of your control, like organizational changes and environmental factors. Don't feel like you have enough information to start? The logic model helps you identify the data you need and tells you what's missing so you can figure out how to fill in the gaps. Feel like you have too much data and don't know what to do with it all? The logic model helps you organize and prioritize the data to avoid overcollection. Feel like you can't do it alone? No problem. To make the greatest impact, an organization should collaboratively develop and use logic models at all levels and staff positions for a shared sense of ownership and accountability. And the best part about logic models, they're flexible and evolving. You can create your logic model based on your current understanding and then revise it as you go along. The 
Say your organization wants to improve staff retention. This is what your logic model might look like. Again, inputs are what we invest. Outputs are what we are doing. And outcomes are our goals. Assumptions are existing knowledge. And external factors are things that might matter, but we can't control. In a struggling healthcare culture, data is everywhere, but nobody knows what to do with it. The team that takes the time to create a culture shift around embracing data, using the logic model as a guide, builds a stronger value proposition which in the end is better for business and patients and residents. What kind of data culture do you want to create? All right, so that gives you kind of like a, a little overview there. Um, what do we think? Today I'm going to be talking okay. about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to share what the components of a logic. Okay, that makes sense. That was eerily timed. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Sean. So, I mean, thoughts? Like, is it? Is this applicable? Do we think? I would say so. It seems like it could be helpful. Actually, we could try it with one. I agree. Like one, one of our goals? Yeah, like more diversity in the staffing, for instance, mm -hmm. like that's a longer mm -hmm. term one. I think that's a good one. You know, because that is a that is a that's not a low hanging fruit uh, by any stretch. Mm -hmm. um, that's a that's a that's going to take work. Want to try it? Want to like try it for something like that? Is that something we? Yeah, I mean that's actually on the agenda because that's something that this committee was tasked with working mm -hmm. on. We had been working on it while we were waiting for the results of the equity audit, um, and didn't make any progress. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an incredibly difficult goal, you know, and it's some, but it's an important, very important goal, mm -hmm. very important goal. Um, so I wonder if that can be something that that maybe. We want to try that approach with, you know, as a as as a. If we really want to break it down, like kind of the way they do it, um, Dr. Murray Johnson could maybe serve as like a little helper, if you will, um, just with her experience doing it. Um, and and the logic model piece is actually put in. That is actually one of the recommendations in the audit. Um, that was that was included in there. Not so much a logic model, but an equity tool. Yeah, yeah. It was in the, there was something about it in yeah. there. I have to get the, the wording exact, but um, I know they did recommend. Uh, yeah, they recommended we use an equity impact tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would Which not I think ask her for input unless we're compensating her. True. Yep. Um, so anyway, I, I, I don't know if... Like this is a, uh, I don't know, something we have to actually like decide yeah. upon firmly yeah, tonight, but but like it was just a thought. Yeah, so Jen, and this is a very honest clarifying question. Um, so as far as like, so right now what I'm seeing is, so we have the subcommittee um, and we have the equity audit, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this subcommittee that has a charge of advising the school committee on like things, like it's an advisory committee, right? And so we have, obviously it set forward like the priority goals and then the school committee obviously like yep. it, there's different pieces that are in different places um, and then there's also like some of the outstanding work from before like the forms is one I think mm -hmm. that's yeah. floating out there and and whatnot and so like kind of what is, as the chair of the subcommittee like what is your thought on like next steps as far as like what the subcommittee will focus their attention on as far as like things that they want to advise the, the school committee on, et cetera. Like I know like as far as like what like Rob is talking about, like I think the logic model is a really good tool um, and really like could be really helpful, but like is our goal to 
expand like what we set forward as like the priority goals this year for the district which are the kind of four or five things that we've like outlined like are we trying to get into more things like like what kind of and I, I honestly don't know your I mean in my, in my mind yeah. and this is just me we've sent our priority yep. recommendations over to the school committee those are the ones that the committee has established yep. our priority there were other ones like you said that two of the things this committee was supposed to be working on because we didn't provide for them in the equity audit because we had to pare back um, one of which we had started um, and then we had delved into the district forms at the request of you know the committee and we didn't finish that so I would see us finishing those things before we I mean we kicked our recommendations out and already provided them in terms of the audit not that there isn't plenty more stuff to pull in but in terms of the priority stuff I feel like we've identified that mm -hmm. so maybe it's the school committee and the administration laying in the things that we're working on those four okay. like and putting them through the lot like I think it's a really good thing and I think it will be very helpful and then I think it will help us report back to this group and also report out to the community but I actually don't know if it's like I and it and like I thinking it through like it might be more like school committee administrative at this point sure. but I, I think it's a really helpful thing and I think it's like a super good suggestion from from her and then through mm -hmm. through up to kind of ground the work because that's something I feel like it's a lot of this yep. and I want to be able to like show it a little bit easier to folks um, and so that's kind of my my thought on it but welcome others think? yeah that seems logical <laughs> <laughs> Chloe? Well, I, um, at first I thought it would be great for us to do, but this discussion made, like, I feel like it makes more sense, you're right, for it to be for the school committee and stuff. But I do really think that the logic model could be really helpful, and I agree with everything that was said. Okay. Is that? Yeah. No, yeah, that's... I don't know, I just kind of agree with everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> well, I agree with pretty much everything that was just said. <laughs> Anybody else have thoughts, comments? I think I, I'm, in, I'm certainly in favor of utilizing the logic model in some capacity. I think it makes sense. I think what was presented in that short clip, which is just a snapshot, that the benefits really are in the, the model being used at multiple levels. I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I, I think it makes sense to use it just to look at one issue, right, as to kind of test it out yeah. and pilot it as opposed to a mass implementation that we're trying to figure out, or all the, every player is trying to figure out their role mm. in that. So it seems to be useful as kind of a test case, okay. perhaps. Where are the forms at? Just, just like in general, like we had talked about updating the district forms and documents to be like inclusive of all family yeah. structures. That, oh, are you asking what the status is? Yeah. The only thing that we have been able to do is... I don't know if that, it's not... It is. It's on the agenda? It's on the agenda. Right, just kidding. Yeah. Um, is that we were able to get the language on the bottom of the letterhead changed. And yes, it has been over a year. Now. That's not true. No, 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 no. I disagree. There's more. Um, we were really intentional in contract language. And like we've been able to true, do some things true. going yeah. forward um, with contract language about being inclusive in the teacher's yeah. contract. We were really intentional in the administrative contract. So there were other progresses yes. that were made, um, maybe not as public to all of the contract. But you know what I mean? So there were some other progresses there. I thought there was discussion too about the applications that went out or the um, the notices of positions. We jobs. did talk about yeah. that. That was something that we had requested that there had been a, a change made to like so when you log in, you see that as an applicant, ever, but that nothing moved forward with okay. that either. So that's why. Um, so I guess the the question is like the forms and documents thing is kind of a like reviewing what currently exists and you know what changes would we think would be beneficial and inclusive and equitable um and that's kind of like a because aaron's right moving forward like all of our contracts and everything we have made a very deliberate attempt to be more inclusive but in terms of like kind of changing what had brought that up in the first place we still have to work to do um so that's like a one the little one yeah that's a little win, having that done. That's well, a so small we thought, victory. We talked about it in June. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. getting there. Yeah. Um, 
it's a step forward. Do you, want to talk, do you want to talk about the documents? Yeah, yeah. so I would say either, like, we decide, like, which one do we, uh, the, the way I look at it is the hiring is a multiple step process. The forms, in theory, can be fixed, and then that's kind of done, except for what's, you know, continues to come. Um, there's no reason we can't work on both. Um, but those were kind of the two things that we had outstanding from before that we never resolved. I do think too, like, like trying to think about the purpose of the subcommittee and like what they're like, what what they want to advise about. You know, like I think it's and this is always tricky for lots of committees that I'm on. Like, what's what who does the work and where does it get done? And so I think too, like I was just looking at the purpose of the subcommittee. Um, because it it's I think especially with the forms and like that conversation like I definitely think that they need that the school committee needs some advisement from this committee regarding like how to tackle the issue what are some very prominent areas that need work like I think they we need the lens of the folks at this table well, but like it was done though I, I wasn't here then yeah so but it was like yeah. it was done it was provided all that work was yeah. put forward to the administration yeah okay Via the school committee? Mm-hmm. Okay. Before me. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so then we just need to probably put it on a school committee agenda I again. Discuss it again. If it's if it got all the way to the school committee voting it on it, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Then that's yeah. Cool. Good job adding it to the list. Okay. So But if the committee has thoughts or things that if it, if we know it's going to go back on an agenda, like if they have thoughts or considerations, like the subcommittee could send additional thoughts forward of, with that. Or like I'd like to hear people's thoughts on the timeline and like priorities. You know, some anything like that I think would be helpful if people want to want to give us some some info. I'd be interested to hear what people have to say. making sure that all the paperwork is inclusive of all people and all families and I think even changing things from like parent guardian to family or something like that to be inclusive of everything. I think that's what we discussed, correct? Yeah. yeah. And we talked about which documents and yeah. you know, gave recommendations for best practices and all of that. So I'm a big like, okay. So like what does the subcommittee think the barrier is then? If you, because I don't, was that literally like last November it got sent over? No, like last June. Like June 2023? June 2022. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what, I guess, do, they, do you all have a sense of, obviously we know there's been a lot of transition and a lot of different things there, but like, do we have other thoughts on maybe like barriers or challenges that other than like? I thought it was an easy one. So what was yeah, that was our low hanging fruit. Yeah. <laughs> so what was yeah. what so what specifically was sent over in June twenty twenty three? It's not attached right to this? No, it's not. It's right. a, let me it, it was um, we wanted to have all district let me find that. Go back to June twenty twenty two. subcommittee to make the following recommendation to the full school committee that all district forms and documents including Aspen and Canvas be updated to reflect gender neutral language be inclusive of all family types allow for multiple options for racial and ethnic identity i.e. not another and be available in a family's native language the goal would be to have these updated by the beginning of the 2022 school year cool so that went off okay no worries so can you send that yeah. to me yeah we're good yeah, yeah. okay yeah thank you and did we have a breakdown of, I know we said Aspen generally, but did we have a breakdown of what specifically, what, because there's lo like lots of field sets in Aspen. Um, did we say anything specific to look at? Just, well, like the language, the family types, the um, inclusive gender neutral language, like I think we didn't probably, say like screen B, but just the types of things that we were looking to make sure were. Did this committee talk about what that looks like? Like you know what I mean? So like for example, like 
like every one, and I am very supportive of this idea. I think language matters as a communications professor. Like I really understand the importance of starting with basics to make people feel inclusive. So like I'm not questioning anything here. I'm just questioning the process and the timeline and stuff in my brain. Uh, but so I guess my question is like every single one of those is like like multi leveled, right? So like okay, it's you know what what are the different things that should be there what does that mean like who makes that judgment like all of that sort of stuff like how deep did you all get in that work we did not we yeah. sent that okay. over and then um we were told that administration would get back to us yeah. granted there's been an administration yeah mm -hmm. would get back to us they didn't they didn't we followed up again and finally in october of 2020 no it can't have been of october um Earlier this year, we finally were able to get at least the letter had changed, and that was the only yeah. thing yeah, that we've been that. Yeah. able to change so far. Um, but like to me, like I look at school websites and I still see parent. Like I look at documents and I still see, um, you know, non-gender neutral language. I look at our website and there's no translation tool. Um, there is now. Is there? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's up in the top right. Yes. Good, good. Um, but I don't that's, see that's been done. I don't see documents yeah. going home <laughs> in multiple languages. Um, it's amazing. I would say Forest Park does a very nice job. What's that? Forest Park. The, the Forest Park. Yes, the Forest Park. I will say that's the only one, and I remember being well. So, so yeah. yeah. So I guess um, so I, what what I think, and it actually ties in nicely to what Rob was talking about before, is like it. it I think we have to be like realistic about like like I think it, it stinks that it has not happened but like we can try to figure out how to make some progress and so what I'm hearing is a little bit of like like we definitely need some either the school committee needs to decide it or the administration needs to decide it or whatnot of like what those benchmark things are right and so I'll use the one that Dave used as an example like Fam, like, like, how should we be re referring to adult humans that support the children's in our school, right? Like, what is our preferred choice, right? And it's evolved in, in my time in education, right? We started with one thing, and then at some point, like at my school, we switched to, um, we were at parents and guardians, and we were at parents and supporters. Like, we go through iterations of it, and so I think what I was hearing Shivali say is like, kind of, do we have like those, like, this is what it, this is what it should say even before we go to that next part and so at some point the like i think as we revisit this like the school committee needs to kind of create that like somehow work with the so administration that was all to, provided. yeah like, like what it should be what it should okay be. yeah okay based on Can recommendations you, I, from the subcommittee mm -hmm. i'll take it out right. yeah it, so, it could probably never have made its way to you. I've never seen it. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So yeah. if you wouldn't mind I I Yeah, I'll dig out everything that I have. Um, yep. Just out of curiosity, is is sending like a letter that says "Dear Parents slash Guardians" not considered to be appropriate for inclusive language? We wanted to add like at, when we initially started this conversation, it was only parents. It hadn't even been correct. Extended to yeah, parents which I agree. Yeah. That's that's it should. Yeah. I'm just saying. I know, like there's been different approaches I've seen. Mostly, it's either parents slash guardians or just dear families. Mm -hmm. Is that like I'm? I, you okay. Look at it. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, because we might have to provide some guidance to for consistency purposes we might have to from there give guidance yep. to our staff mm -hmm. right to mm -hmm. say like be mindful because sometimes they're just not they just they just don't think of yeah. it right right um, I know that we went into Aspen and canvas and made sure that we had you know not just preferred first name last name we made sure that there's a field set now for preferred gender so we've done some of those things that people may not know that may be directly connected to that goal. Mm. Um, so we may have to do a little audit and, and guidance. And then I think to communication, right? Like, because um, like you can start with like some very big things, right? Like um, an example of progress that we made was on um, the main NK website. I believe it used to say parents as the drop down and now it says families, yep. right? And yep. so I, I know that's one we've changed since I've been on. And so I agree with Shivali, like, you know, like obviously the, there are certain areas of people that can have some control over certain areas, but then also like getting the word out to the community and the teachers and whatnot, like, hey, anytime you are getting ready to resend out that form, you send out every year, like here's five or six simple things mm -hmm. to check, 
like to make sure that you're like trying to use yeah. the most inclu inclusive language as possible because you think you've got everything and then you like find the weird form that you sent XYZ you know so I think making it digestible is really important and also making it like a, a community effort is really important and so um, that would be very helpful mm -hmm. like a yeah. cheat sheet yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I agree and then so um, you know I think if the um, you know obviously this the subcommittee can do whatever they'd like but like if they like you all could make an advisement that it goes you know on the next school committee agenda to get relooked at you know like you, whatever you all feel I don't want to like lead it by any ways but like you know that's kind of your role is like hey like just you know and again we've had so much change like I don't think it's I would not take it as a this is an important thing I think it's a a lot changed and it's gonna be the base but like I am giving you I know. Base, yeah and that's okay but like I think that we can reprioritize this but I also think if if the subcommittee wants to make it like an official thing to the school committee like obviously Jen and I will be there but like sometimes that helps with like kind of communicating the message to the larger um, school committee what do you mean an official thing like if the the subcommittee wants to say like hey like we in addition to the things that we have recommended like we would like to you know ask the school the current school committee which is not the same school right. committee that received the documents yeah. um to you know work with the administration to prioritize this like this year as it was not done previously like you could send that up officially if you want so to. just to be clear yeah. that it came to the school committee yeah. the school committee voted on it yeah. and said yes you need to do yeah. this so you're saying that we need to come back to you and say you need to do that thing that you said you were going to do <laughs> no yeah, no. I, yeah. It's at, it's at the administrative level. It is. Point. It, yeah. For for me, quite honestly, like I I just want to make sh I want to know what, what, like like where are we where's the gaps? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what are we missing? Like I know the translate piece on the website yeah. was a point that was raised to me by another um, community member, yeah. and and we get the translate on there. It's done. You know what I mean? Um, the piece about parents, like like we have a lot of forms in this district, like uh, as you know. Yeah. Um, so like. I guess like my my thing is like how can I I'm trying to think about it like how can I audit these forms or how can uh, these how forms about I dig out all the yeah. work that we've done all the work that's already been provided and I give it to you that would be really helpful I can totally yeah. thank 100% you. do that. thank you because yeah. like I'm, I I want to solve this problem 100% yeah. yeah. you know what I mean and I we just we just need to like make sure we got yeah. everything yeah. And, yeah. And, and and I just I don't want to see this subcommittee have to revisit what no, we've already we, no. done when yeah. it's already been decided it was something that should have been done if the work's already been done let's not do it again it's let's get the yeah. work done that needs to get done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Chloe. Well, I was just wondering where you said the thing about like maybe like talking to the school committee like about like how we want this to be prior prioritized. Like, what would that look like, and like how would that be different from like what we already did by recommending it? Yeah. So, but again, like I knew about this with like Jen. This is not the first time I've heard about this piece um, by any means, but like with the like where it lived, like which is in, like the, the school committee oversees a certain amount of stuff and then the administration handles the administrative part, right? And obviously we've had great change on the administrative side, which is wonderful. Um, and so it's not that I didn't, like we, like what I was saying is like a, school, uh, a subcommittee, you all made the recommendation, you made the recommendation that the work was done by October 22, it did not get done, right, fully. And so like, if you the subcommittee could make a recommendation that like the school committee like officially like obviously it will happen because we're humans and like we will human it right but like that you could ask as a sub subcommittee to say like hey like we'd really like to see like some progress on this and a report back like by this date or we would really um you know like to see um you know priority be given to this or whatever because the the school committee what I'm assuming has already sent it to the administration and so at this point it's there but the the school committee could work with the administration on things and then also they can like request things from the administration like hey we'd like an update on this you know de different things and so depending on what you all would like to see as the next thing like you can make that official recommendation does that make sense that does make sense to me like because the school committee wasn't able to meet our like first ask of like the date we could yeah. set another like I don't want to say like deadline because it's not like really a deadline, but like like another date that we would want to have it done by to be like, hey, like you know, obviously with all the stuff that was happening and the administration and stuff, we weren't able to meet this date. Could you meet this 
next day. Like I feel like that makes sense and it could help like put things into motion in a more like, you know, sense like I feel like, I don't know if like I'm understanding this right, but it seems like maybe the information about our recommendations kind of got like, I don't want to say like lost in the system, but like it's kind of like not been like prioritized as much recently, or recently, but like in the past. You does anyone understand what I'm I, saying? I'm sorry. Yeah, we do. And like I just yep. feel like if we could like, I agree. Like if we could set like another date or like or like say something to the school committee, it it would kind of like maybe like spur into action in a more like quick way. Or I, I don't. We can definitely do that. I don't know. I, 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 I guess I'm trying to say I, stuff that's already been said. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right on. I think you're right on the money. And I think that, like, just just being in my position and knowing, like, just in this office, how 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 many of us started within the last, like, couple of months, like, that's, I think that has a little bit to do with it, just because this came back from June of 2022. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had, and again, not making an excuse, just just talking about realities. Mm -hmm. We've had we've had many new people shuffling in. in this has been brought up more than once. Like okay. so, it's not like it came to the school committee. Yep. We no, said yes, yeah. and then it didn't happen. Like I, I brought it back before the school committee, I think three times. Okay. So I I don't want to see the subcommittee have to follow up and say why haven't you done this? Like the school committee approved it. We tasked the administration with it. I feel like that's at the school committee level now, not the subcommittee yeah. level. That's just my opinion. So, sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah. So on the agenda, it says re review and discuss suggestions for revisions of the district documents with possible actions for recommendations to the school committee on the, this agenda mm -hmm. today, right? And so, and no shade, like I know you're frustrated. Yeah. I totally get it. I would be frustrated too. Um, and, and, but like, so, we are reviewing that nothing happened. Yeah. We are, so I was curious if that's where I was going with the d discuss suggestions, like like for revisions for documents with possible action recommended to the school committee. So that's what I was asking, yeah. right? Like obviously we're getting an update, like, and obviously, but like it does the subcommittee have suggestions like for, with, like for the school committee is I guess what I was trying to get at with like what you were, had put on the agenda, like for what you were hoping to get out of this. That makes sense. No, but that's okay. I'll ask you a different way. Like, what's the goal of this being on the agenda? I guess is the question. To discuss the fact that it still hasn't been done. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, is there something else that we want to see done in that other than actually like getting it yep. done? Discussions. Are there any policies that like address like language and forms and documents? Because that could be like a, a way to like I'm thinking about what the school committee has yeah. like um, control over and like like you know like obviously we know there's the budget and there's yeah. policies you know and so not that this this falls kind of procedurally but also like could be reviewed as for for policy consideration yeah I mean it definitely yeah. can be I, I think again my frustration is school committee tasks the administration with it administration hasn't done it. So I'm more than happy to dig out everything that we've done yeah. and provide it to the new administration, but I don't think that the, this subcommittee should have to say, could you please do what you said you were going yeah, to do. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I think too, like like what I was thinking about is like, and and I have great faith in the like new administration. Like, too. so it's, it, but so, but, but a policy like, um, like that, for lack of a better word, like mandates things, like you know, like it it, yeah. it it formalizes things, right? So right now, like the recommendation is on the good graces of the administration, whoever's in those seats, to do yeah. X. Like a policy is more structurally like yeah. long term, for lack of a better word. And so, not that we need more policies. Well, it's, already, means, it's already on the list of yeah. ones that need to yeah. be added. So I mean, it yeah. is there. It's waiting to get put forward yeah. in front of policy. Yeah. So I was just thinking of like other ways to approach the problem. Um, obviously a, a review and awareness so now like administration is aware we're going to mm -hmm. be able to send them the documents but then also like I'm just trying to think of other ways to look at it like to see if there's opportunities for for, for possible action that's all Anybody have I just want to ask a clarifying question so with the discussion with policies we're talking about policies of how forms are presented is that correct Policies so, on what should be in district documents, forms, things so like that. So then, yeah. in terms of the discussion with forms and documents, there's also been some discussion around website language. 
So is that inclusive? I think it's all part of the is same it, thing. Is that, that clear? So I'm wondering, is as this conversation continues that that become a little bit more inclusive because you know I have questions around if there are more changes on the websites that need to take place that that all happens together as kind of one package and with administration not just school administration but district administration for IT website design whoever handles that piece I'm throwing that out and yep. then a question regarding accessibility on the website. You know, are there tools available to families in the community to fully access the website from varying sensory approaches? So. That's a great point. Did I change my NKS NK website to a different language? Yes. Can you get it back? No. It's the top left is English. Top, top left. Top left hand side. Okay, thank you. So once you change it, it doesn't <laughs> then tell it like it's all in the other language. And you don't know how to get it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, when you need a language teacher <laughs> to come read the, it. With the word uh, translate in English, unless there were a flat, you know some type of a symbol there, mm -hmm. would someone or a family know to navigate right. to the top right? That's where it still lives on that page, but. Yeah, we had also gotten an email, I'm glad you said that, about website accessibility, about the fact that our website is not accessible, um, you know, for certain segments of our population. Um, so maybe we could put that recommendation forward, like in addition to what we've already sent forward, to ex expand that to cover. So it's, because if you're already, yeah, if then you're, you're doing a complete overhaul of documents on the website, because right, we didn't specifically say website when we initially sent it forward. It was districts, forms, and documents, which in my mind is the same thing, but it's not. It doesn't specifically spell that out. And that could prevent further work down the road, right, now that if we're revisiting it now? Perhaps. And maybe in, when this policy is developed and read and presented, it could have the, the point person to, if someone does encounter something, on there that doesn't seem to fit within the language that we decide mm -hmm. to use. The the point person for a please email so and so and they will make sure that this is addressed, understanding that we are gonna miss things. Because mm -hmm. you don't look at some things for a couple of years right, and then it pops right. up as yep. you're saying. Yeah. Um is there an um I'm just trying to think of I also think of like whenever I'm trying to like approach something, um like a tech committee or a tech advisor like is there a group of employees or like I'm trying to think of like the different because I also in addition to adding policies I also hate adding groups right but so I was trying to think of like if there are people that you could say hey like like and this isn't probably the right example but like hey sit teams like we'd like each of the sit teams to review their own schools for XYZ like I'm trying to think of groups that exist that could like try to tackle different levels of it too. Um, or another area that the school committee controls is like resources, right? Like so, like one of the reason things don't get done is because like there are not people to do it. And I'm not saying that's this problem, but like maybe the challenge is that the school committee needs to look at like, does the district have the resources to do what seems very simple, but like as somebody who's done it in my own work, like I know it's not. Like it's, it's really complicated. You could spend a week trying to figure out like one piece of it, right? And so is it, like, like, kind of just thinking again, like this committee advises the school committee, like, is it something that we need, want to advise the school committee to look at resources to, or to look at, um, you know, who, like who gets assigned the work or what, like things like that. Like, I don't know. I just am trying to think of like, whenever there's a barrier to something happening, I always try to look at it in like a couple different ways of like how we can try to advise like progress for lack of a better word. Do you look like you want to say something? No, I'm s still stuck on that. It, that I, I don't want to set the precedent. I, I agree with what you said. I don't want to set a precedent and we have to bring something up multiple times and vote on it, have the school committee vote on it multiple times. And it seems like a, not a good road to go down for a lot of reasons. Um, and I think going forward, like we need to make sure that anything we put forward has a timestamp. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was all I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. Oh, I also. We, it, that did have a timeline on it. <laughs> I know. Um, well, the the tricky part is, and and even if we hadn't had administrative change, like 
like the school committee can make recommendations to the administration, but like, like then it's in the superintendent's hands as far as like the implementation of it. Um, and so, like, without a policy or without whatever, like it doesn't have. It's just a nice. It's a recommendation, right? Hey, the sub, the, you know, go please try to do this. And so you can request October twenty twenty two, but like, it, it there's not for lack of a better word like teeth to that, right? Because they're not in violation of any policy. They're not, you know, misusing funds. They're not, you know, like, so that's where I'm trying. And I don't want to add, I'm not saying that a policy is the right choice, but I'm just thinking through, like, how do you structurally set this up so that it is accountable and also, like, systematic? So as people change and different things change, like, there's a foundation for, like, the expectation. That, that's all. No, and I, I'm I, I, about. I agree yeah. that I think my, my thing is that that doesn't belong at this level because it's already moved out of this level. Like, the school committee yep. said, yes, this is something we want to prioritize. We think this is important. It hasn't happened. So it should be just like anything else that the school committee asked for. That doesn't happen. It should not. It should be in the school committee's hands to follow up, not in the people who made the recommendation. So I'm just going to say, speaking on, be, I'm the only district administrator. It would, it, it would be very helpful for me to just know exactly what was recommended, mm -hmm. and I am 100% on board with making this happen. I haven't been aware of it. Yeah. No, and that I, I will tell, I, and that doesn't surprise me in the least. So yep. I will 100% dig out everything, and I will send it to you. Absolutely, and I have confidence that you will move it forward. I will. I'm. I'm. I'm I just want to. I want to know what exactly we yep. need to do to make this happen. Yeah. Because to me, it's just let's let's make it happen. Yeah. So can outside. we just can we just start with that, like, and maybe we can discuss if there's other concerns, and just move send it to Rob first, and. We go from he there. Put it into his logic model, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it would work really well for this one. Well, yeah, because like yeah. it's it's um, I'm I'm just like as I'm listening, I'm I'm kind of just like scouring the website just for like and you know just for what I think could be you know not along the lines of what we're looking mm -hmm. to do here, and um, I, it's just going to be it's going to be helpful for me to have it in front of me in mm -hmm. terms of like in terms of like where what the what the charge was. That, that administration needed to get done. Mm -hmm. um, that would help a lot. I could totally dig out everything Thank that you. we put together and give it to you. Thank you. Yeah. Did you have something? Oh. I was just thinking, just you know, from an outside perspective, it sounds like that's where it is. There's been turnover, right? And so it sounds like it's in the district administrative hands now and the school administrative hands. And now it's just essentially moving forward with that at how how you see fit your individual schools. I do think it's timing, you know, to, to ask teachers to to to, to re-communicate or, I mean, they have to shift that language and that communication in such a way, you know, that makes sense, I think, right now. Mm -hmm. So perhaps maybe a more formal overhaul in the coming months. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in terms of the website, I don't know who oversees that that work and you're right with the resources that takes a lot of work to do that yeah I think I think that it, it, once once we have a, a read on the scope here you know um, we have different people who are in charge of different things um, like Dave said like there's there there may be some there may be some forms like oh this one doesn't get used a lot or whatever it is or there's certain departments that that we have to dig things out of and, and so on and so forth I, i'm just going to say in general it's hard because i haven't i haven't seen the specifics around the scope of the work and, and i think that i'd be happy to report back to the committee on it um once i once i have that and once we have awesome. a yeah. you know what I mean? well, once so we have a plan on it once we have some kind of um just just you know like layout for how we want to divide the work among either whether it be the schools, whether it be the website, whether it be the district office, whether it be the finance office, whether it be HR, whatever it is, how we're just going to be systematically going at the work, you know? Um, I'd be happy to report back on that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Chloe, was there something you wanted to say? Oh, yeah, but uh, it's a little bit unrelated, but That's okay. Go ahead. I just wanted to ask about, like, you know, after this meeting's over, like, what, what our, take, our, our takeaways are, um, I can't remember exactly who said this, but someone earlier su made a suggestion about um, the the um, 
the policies and stuff mm -hmm. that was that we could you know like develop a way for like teachers to review their own documents that they send out you know based on specific ideas and I was wondering is that totally out of our hands or I don't know if other people also like that idea but if other people also like that idea I was wondering if there is a way that like like is that totally out of our hands or like is that something we could like put down or like I just like that put, seems put like what down like asking them to or do something it or I don't know like is that already included okay. I just like like where how can we move forward with that idea if other people also like that idea because I thought like I asking like, teachers to review right like their own? like okay. I thought that seemed like a cool like a like it could actually have yeah. an impact is that totally out of left field and like helpful I yeah. just no that falls in line yeah. so I think what so so, Jen, I really want to acknowledge your frustration. And I knew about this issue, and it's on a very, very long list that I'm looking at of things. So I'm glad you brought it back up. Um, and so I think for, I do think, like, because what's going to happen is, and this sounds silly, too, it's the same as, like, the the idea that you had about membership going, like, a, like along the roads with lots of the same people in the same meetings, right? But what I would probably recommend from a structural thing is have, this committee like like make a recommendation like advise the school committee like hey we really like the school committee to reprioritize this look at it etc right so then when you report out the school committee level they will hear that from the subcommittee if that's what the subcommittee wants to do and then when the school committee hears that if it if it it will be at the meeting that it's not on the agenda for right and so then we have the opportunity to put it on the next agenda and then we can get if by then the administration will have seen the documents different things and the administration and the school committee can have a conversation of, okay, we have this information, we are committed to working on this, like, we would love the subcommittee to give us some guidance or advisement on these questions, right? Like, who, like, and we might be able to utilize this group to help on areas that we might need assistance on. And so, I think, like, I would recommend, like, sending, like, having, like, it's not that you have to do the work, but just saying, like, hey, like, we talked about this today, these are some things that, like, we're hoping the school committee would would look at and, and have it on their next agenda to, to have a conversation and then kind of just push it forward in a formal way as well. Obviously the people at this table will also work at it, but like if you're thinking about like the original motion and the original like charge, like it, and like the multiple times it came up, like clearly like it has to be like looked at in a formal way, I think. So that's, that's kind of why I was like making that recommendation. And then to Chloe's point about like the like procedures like the like and not this this might not happen but like the administration might come back and be like hey like we really like this concept but like we love the subcommittee's advisement on like different techniques and ways we can do this to like really get the community involved right and you already came up with some good ideas like one was having something on the website so if you notice something you can submit something um the thing that i was saying about like the checklist for teachers and staff you know and so like maybe that's an opportunity to give some some voice to it as well, if that makes sense. You're still giving me the base now. I, I just, yeah. I, it's already been, I mean, yeah. I, I, I guess, I agree, it sets a bad precedent. Yeah. Like, so this means every recommendation, if it doesn't get followed up on, it shouldn't be the subcommittee's responsibility. Yeah. The subcommittee is an advisory committee. We advise the school committee. Yeah. The school committee voted on it. Yeah. I mean, I have no problem in my capacity as a school committee member requesting that this be put on the next agenda, but I don't think it makes sense to have to resubmit things that have already been voted on by the school committee. Yeah, that's fine then. You don't have to, but you could. I mean, but I'm just one person, yeah. so. And, but I think, I was also trying to think about like, Chloe's thought about like, like where this committee could like, for like a better word, like assist, or like, yeah. like who would like help do that work? Cause that, you know, we have that as a concern too about like, where the work lays and like that sort of thing. And I so. think if the administration comes yeah. back and says we'd love to do this but yeah. we need XYZ, it can certainly come back down yeah. to the subcommittee one hundred percent. Yeah. I think things can function more organically too. We have a this committee made up of administrators, teachers, community members, students, um, school committee members. So Chloe, for your suggestion about how could we get teachers to maybe think about reviewing their the materials that they put out. Mm -hmm. I think if you and your friends started talking about it, like, hey, I wonder if we could make like a guidebook that sits in the teacher's right. room, or and I know that I'm going to go back home to my home school and I'm going to start having these conversations with my colleagues. And I'll say, have you ever? When's the last time you updated these things? Or have you ever? When you re read them, what do you, what language are you using now? Because I could use some help in updating my documents as well. 
So it can kind of spring up organically as well. Right. That's what I was referring to, just like wondering like how we could like make that be like something that could happen if it wouldn't necessarily be a part of our recommendation or not. That's what I was asking. So I think that's a really great idea actually. Mm -hmm. I might suggest that for to to some of my peers. Yeah. That'd be a great thing for the GSA to work on. Oh yeah. yeah. It would be. Yeah, like a GSA guide for yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Is that something is this part of a, a possible sit a sit meeting? We could. I mean I'm just thinking at the at the various schools, you know, it sounds like you know, perhaps our our group will receive more information on on where we stand, right? Since there's been turnover, but to give it, you know, I don't want to say give it time, but I guess I will, right? Essentially, essentially for the the seeds to kind of root and then conversations to take place, you know, in terms of uh, updating, updating what needs to be updated. Yeah, we could. Uh, they would need a little guidance. Mm -hmm. So I think, like mm -hmm. Jen, once you send your stuff mm -hmm. to Rob. They would, they would need yeah. some guidance because not everybody is all up and educated on certain things. So mm -hmm. they, would, they would need something, some kind of cheat sheet, what to look for. Do you have any additional ideas? If we miss anything on this cheat sheet that you think should be included and then look at. Um, so they would need some structure mm -hmm. so that the meeting can be productive. But yeah, it can certainly be put into sit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. people think they're doing it. The right thing they think yeah. that they're being yeah. inclusive <coughs> and they just they just don't realize that they're not and so having mm -hmm. the the refocus and coming from different levels because sometimes when it comes just down from the top mm. it people like tense up and they tend to reject it mm -hmm. when it comes from up here it's a little more but they can still be a little testy but we can't say no to kids <laughs> i think that's where the most that's where the greatest impact will happen and then also at another level amongst teachers or teacher leaders having conversations within with colleagues uh, you know and your trusted colleagues to, to, to redesign some of the documents that you might have been using for many years right and you think you've been doing what needs to be done I really agree with that I feel like it like I I really like I said before really like that idea of like having teachers have resources available to them but it doesn't have to be like mandated or official it's just important to have those resources available and I think a lot of teachers would really use them and, and, and appreciate having that available. Can, Chloe can I ask you as a student do you see this happening a lot in, in, in your classes where there's um, maybe let's let, let's just say like non-inclusive language that comes across in materials you get from your teachers or in class and things like that? Do you see it happening often? Um, sometimes. I feel like I don't always notice it. Is that? Mm -hmm. I feel like as someone who like, you know, like I live with my parents um, who are my biological parents, like I might not pick up on it if a form that was sent out to me said parents instead of parents or guardians. But for a student who, who lives with a guardian and not a parent, that might really stick out to them. And so like, like, I don't like, I don't notice it as much, but I think a lot of other students do. Does, does that, does that make does, any sense? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure there are curricular materials as well that need to be screened, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. so. so, does somebody want to make a motion? Do we want to leave it where it stands? What do we want to do? I think that it's going to be forwarded to Rob. Rob's going to, I trust that Rob's going to look at it. I do as well. I think for me, right now. Yeah, no, I'm happy to do it. Like I said, I, 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 uh, I mean, I, I, Jen, I can totally understand your frustration. You know what I mean? Um, with this, with the time lag being what it is, I, I can, I can it's tell a, you that. Sorry. Oh no, no, sorry. Go ahead. Finish with that. Okay, I was just going to say, like, um, I'm happy to obviously take the action that needs to be taken here. No, and I, and I have yeah. every confidence that you will. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else? Comments, questions, concerns? Okay, then on that, I will make a motion to adjourn. Second? Okay. Thank you very much, Thanks, everybody. But we really can't say no to the kids when they ask for something. It's really hard. Thank you guys for listening. I say no to kids every day.